All right, for some reason, I did not even notice there was example 7 or 8 on the back side when I went through section 2.6 the first time, so I apologize for that. Uh, this won't take long, I don't think, but uh, here's your little uh, explanation for this problem. It says two possible solutions to the equation f of x equals 0 are listed. In other words, they're not giving you the equation. It says use the graph to decide if any are extraneous. Now, I need you guys to kind of understand that, you know, on the first few problems, let me flip this over and try to make sense of this. So, you know, for example, one, um, we initially say x cannot equal zero. And then if we solve the problem, and I'm not going to do it because we've already done it, but if we solve the problem and we end up getting like 0 and 12, I'm just making this stuff up, are our answers, we would say, aha, 0 cannot be one of our answers because we noticed it's not part of our domain. Therefore, this would be considered an extraneous solution, which means it's not a solution at all. It's something that is a possibility but it's already been canceled out. So with that being said, if we were to graph this, it would actually be the asymptote. Now, x equals 0 would actually be this line. Okay? So we know, and I'm again, I'm not trying to be a perfectionist here, but we know the graph might come in like this, where it tries to touch the asymptote, but it can't, but it might come in on this side, but whatever. That's the definition uh, in a nutshell, what an extraneous solution is. It, it's really an asymptote. It's something that x cannot be. Uh, so there is no value uh, on this line, okay, where the graph can cross it. So x can't be 0. So with that being said, we look at this, and the problem is asking us, okay, is this extraneous? That's what it's asking you. Use the graph to decide if any are extraneous. And if we graph this and we go x equals negative 2, we can see that there is definitely a point, um, you know, where x equal. basically the graph crosses the asymptote. So this is a solution. It is not extraneous. Now let's take a look at this line, x equals 3, 1, 2, 3. We draw a line in there. And we can see that the graph crosses that line. Therefore, this is a solution, and it's not extraneous. So we would say neither of these are extraneous roots. And then we go down to this one. Now, I'm going to tweak this one a little bit so that you can kind of understand what I'm saying. So, um, well, let's just talk about what the problem says. x equals negative 3. 1, 2, 3. You can see that the graph crosses there is a value. That point right there is like, you know, negative 3, 0. So there is a point that has x as negative 3 on the graph. Now let's go with 4. If we go 1, 2, 3, 4, we'd go 1, 2, 3, I'm just guessing, 0. 0.7. So it'd be like 4, comma 3.7. Again, I'm just guessing. But here's my point. This could be a very good possibility. x can equal 4 because there's a part of the graph that corresponds to it. Now, so therefore, neither of these are extraneous again. However, if I was to draw in, let's change this, and let's say the original problem was x equals 1, and we kind of look at this drawing, and here's, here's the graph of x equals 1 right here. There it is in pencil. There it is, x equals 1. And we can tell that this graph is trying to get there, but it could very well be an asymptote. We would say, aha, this is something that x cannot equal because the graph doesn't cross it. So we would say this is very likely an extraneous solution or an extraneous root. I hope that doesn't cloud your clarity. I hope it clarifies it, okay? Um, so... There you go. That's it.